What's up everybody, D-Man back, welcome to a brand new video, and today we're going to be doing another Godzilla vs. Kong news roundup. In today's video, we're going to be talking about all of the Godzilla vs. Kong news to drop in June 2021, so let's jump right into it, starting out with some fan art. I'm glad to be doing that again, even though it's not going to become a staple of these news roundups, it just so happened to line up this way, because Legendary hosted a fan art competition for Kaijun, I believe, where they challenged a whole bunch of kaiju creators to do MonsterVerse fan art and then featured their favorites. The winners were Pinocchio Lives, Seagun's Art, and Write a Book. Good job, Tanner. Way to make it in there. That's awesome. I love Tanner. Uh, he's been a long time supporter of the channel and I feature his art as much as I can. These art pieces are amazing. I love them. I love all of the different styles. The Burning Godzilla with the Wings is super awesome. I'm a big fan of the Neon Kong. It looks beautiful. This is just a really classic awesome monster verse Godzilla we've got going on here. And then this Neon Muto picture is so freaking cool. I love it. <laughs> Rubies is back at it with something horrible. <laughs> Rubies released a cursed little Mecha Godzilla mask, much like they did with the Godzilla King of the Monsters line when they released their little masks. On Honestly, I give Ruby's credit for just keep going for it, and there, there's something cool about it. It does look generally pretty decent. If it wasn't a mask, I think it'd be awesome. I mean, overall, it looks really nice. I, I, I want to say some nice things about it because I'm about to make fun of it. I, I don't know. I think the texturing is great. I think the sculpt itself is actually phenomenal. I love a lot of the detailing here. I think the paint looks awesome. The eye looks great. The red looks great. The contrast looks great. But oh my God, how cursed is that? Look at that weird little eye slit where you can see the guy's eyes inside of the mouth that's horrifying i also feel like it just doesn't go down far enough on the neck it, it looks a little silly it looks i don't know it, it looks silly it's better than some of their other stuff so uh you know i, I like that <laughs> sh monster arts had a display for their godzilla kong and mecha godzilla and it just makes me even more sad that i wasn't able to get that mecha godzilla because it's just so wonderful i love it ua monsters released a kong 2021 it was 12 inches and it was 157 dollars the ua monsters kong came in a fixed pose it seems although he he could articulate a little bit he held the axe which is pretty awesome and overall he's pretty highly detailed and looks generally pretty awesome i actually like him quite a bit art spirits released a super gekizo series kong 2021 this one's a little better in my opinion um I, th I think it generally looks a little better it's got a much meaner look the axe looks a little better overall it's just better sculpting and detailing all around which explains why it's a little more expensive this one was 196 dollars omega beast released a godzilla furious blue version now i don't know much about this we only see these promo images here so i don't totally know what it looks like actually as a product these are just some uh, promotional photos i mean the other ones were too but these ones are a little more vague as to what the actual product finally is going to look like altogether we also only get snippets of godzilla here this was 22 inches and ran you 1200 dollars so i hope for people who bought it they thought it was worth it i'm gonna guess it glows maybe it's just a paint job but my guess is simply because of the price i feel like it should glow it should be lit up prime one studios like i said in the last video released a Godzilla vs. Kong final battle diorama. This was a Hong Kong diorama and it was incredible I think. The full diorama together cost $5,699. So that's the whole thing with Hong Kong and Godzilla and Kong. Now you could buy a smaller chunk of Hong Kong with Godzilla and a smaller chunk of Hong Kong with Kong. Godzilla ran you $1,949 while Kong ran you $1,899. I don't think adding those two together, the math, I don't think it adds up to where you actually wind up with the exact 5,000 amount. Ultimately, I think this is an incredible diorama set. I would prefer to get the busts that we've talked about before, but this is also awesome and I'm gonna talk more about their stuff later because they have a bunch more stuff I'm sure. Godzilla vs. Kong when it came out on DVD had a whole bunch of Walmart displays they were really cool personally I thought they were really cool it's Godzilla and Kong fighting in the aircraft carrier just like you'd expect super cool I, I uh, loved seeing it in person when I got to see it. Adobe Photoshop camera held a Godzilla vs. Kong collab event I'm gonna talk more about that in a future video when it actually concluded and we got the results for that but just for now they announced that they were doing a Photoshop contest I believe it was mostly for China if I'm not mistaken where a whole bunch of people were just submitting their posters their own made up posters for Godzilla vs Kong that they made using Photoshop and then Photoshop was going to pick their favorites there is an app Godzilla Battle Line that I actually really really love I think it's incredibly addicting and I play it all the time it's my favorite Godzilla app and ultimately it's like kind of my favorite game app that's been released I think it's just super fun they did a collab with Godzilla vs Kong where they featured a trailer they have a wallpaper and well this was back in the day and then they revealed the player model for Kong so the way that game works is like you collect the Kong player 
player piece and then it's kind of like a game of chess where you can deploy him in a battle it's a little more elaborate than chess well it's not more sophisticated but it's uh, different controls sorry <laughs> don't want to piss off the chess community <laughs> yeah i really loved it i think it was a super cute event and i like the little chibi designs for them unfortunately if you download the app now you can no longer collect godzilla and kong from godzilla versus kong they're gone but if you got them before you still have them as i believe i've talked about before there's an empire dcx premium cabinet game featuring godzilla and kong now this is a gambling game like a slot machine i, I honestly don't really know how it works i've never really been into gambling or played slots or anything like that so i don't know basically you spin a wheel get a whole bunch of like characters to try and line up these tokens with each other and then you can win grand prizes or it seems make monster battles happen ultimately i think this game looks best when it's just featuring footage from the movies but they do have a pretty sick godzilla design in there i really like their godzilla they have a burning godzilla as well i think their kong needs a little work but ultimately i guess if you're a gambling man maybe that's up your alley like i said i'm not going to cover a lot of concept art but i did want to cover some that i had stuff to bite into so today i'm going to talk about one just for you guys because i know the fans seem to really go crazy for this little guy Titan Tannis Doug had some concept art drawn up by Jared Krzyzewski. This is a little bit of a meaner looking Doug. I mean, this guy looks a little more fearsome than the one we got in the movie. He also looks a little bigger than the one we got in the movie too. He's a little bit more monstrous. Pretty cool. There was some concept art drawn up by Dope Pope. It actually might just be fan art, but it was labeled as concept art. So that's what I'll refer to it as as well. Dope Pope did not correct the labeling. He just left it. So I, I'm going to assume it was maybe concept art for Titanus Tiamat. Tiamat features in God's Little Minion. He's like a big serpent monster. He's kind of the monster versus is Manda in many ways, although he's a lot more badass than Manda. <laughs> Sorry, Manda. But he does look like he takes a lot of inspiration from Manda. He's also got this like open head frill thing that looks very Pacific Rim with the neon lighting. Uh, it's really awesome. He's one of my favorite kaiju that appears in Godzilla Dominion, and I would love to actually see him in live action someday. I think he's super, super cool, especially because he does have that Manda influence. Could be a really cool thing to see in live action. Plus, you know, it's just this whole like Eastern dragon. Those are always cool to see. It's always different when you get to see an Eastern dragon versus a Western dragon i like it finally we have a different look at kong's lava temple now the reason i wanted to bring this up is because i wanted to know what people think of it i want to know if people like this design better or worse than the one we got in godzilla vs kong ultimately i think kong's throne room in godzilla vs kong looks better than this concept art but the hollow earth itself this is what i pictured it to look like i pictured it being a massive cave this giant cavern with you know giant stalactites and stalagmites and lava everywhere and that's what lights it is the lava i pictured it being a very rocky monster horrific place kind of like hell under earth i don't know what i think of the hollow earth in comparison to that while i do like the hollow earth in godzilla vs kong i think it's incredibly creative and it's like a fantasy world i absolutely love it when i think about it logically i think the logical part of my brain would have preferred a much more lava-esque cavernous version of the hollow earth something a lot scarier than what we got in the movie that being said what we got in the movie i think is better for sequel potential and i'm excited to see that world explored in the future it's basically a giant skull island but it's got that really Really awesome gravity inversion so I'm here for the ride I, I guess I gotta just kind of smother out that logical part of my brain at times and just say it's just a movie go with it you know mst3k style but I wanted to bring that up because I wanted to know what you guys thought I think that is still a really cool temple in and of itself next up we have some more VFX stuff from scanline so starting out we have a uh, mechagodzilla one of mechagodzilla shooting his beam the thing I really liked about this one is that we get to see the different colors of his beam so there's the blue lightning and then the red it's a little sad actually that they got rid of the blue as they develop through him they tone it down quite a bit by the time they get to the final product but it is still really cool to see the way that they developed this sequence i always love seeing behind the scenes stuff like this it's always a good time i also like the way that i don't know if you guys can tell mechagodzilla appears to become a little more three-dimensional as we go through it he starts out looking a little flat and by the end of it he looks much more three-dimensional not that they actually changed anything they just changed the lighting on him next up they did the mechagodzilla beam battle pretty awesome starting out with just a base image of hong kong they add Godzilla and Mechagodzilla. Now, this is something that pisses me off. It pisses the fans off from what I've seen on Twitter. If you've noticed, and you definitely will see it here in the movie, it's always stuck out to me since day one. Godzilla's atomic breath is not hitting Mechagodzilla's atomic breath. Mechagodzilla is shooting too low. Godzilla is shooting too high. I don't know how they didn't just make Mechagodzilla look a little higher. Literally, all they had to do was tweak Mechagodzilla's head upward, and then the beams line up much better. But the way it is, it looks like Godzilla's beam just kind of erupts into the sky, into the air 
air and Mechagodzilla hits the bottom part of that. I don't I don't know. The whole beam battle thing is a very silly concept to begin with. It's something that if you question it, you're always going to be like, well, how does that even work to begin with? Either way, I would have preferred them to line up a little better. I do like the spirals that they add through our Mechagodzilla's beam, though. It's pretty cool. And then getting to the final image, Godzilla just looks incredible. The lighting, it just it's such a good shot. I don't know. I, I like it. I, I just think it could have been lined up a little better. Moving on to the next one, we have a Godzilla charging Mechagodzilla in Hong Kong picture. This came from the Blu-ray. A lot of the next stuff came from the Blu-ray. Now, this picture shows a wide shot of Godzilla and Mechagodzilla. This wasn't used in the movie. It was just used to stage them in the city. I just think it's such a cool shot. It shows, first of all, what it would look like if they shot in this kind of foggy, hazy daytime, but also it shows what it would have looked like if they fought in the city without any prior destruction. And it, it looks equally as cool, if not cooler, seeing them in an actual about-to-be-destroyed city versus one that's already been knocked down quite a bit. The thing that I think is kind of silly about this and I never noticed in the movie, and I, it doesn't really matter ultimately because it happens in literally every single Godzilla movie in human history, is that Godzilla and Mechagodzilla's scale shifts so much. I mean, Mechagodzilla is standing there next to the building that Kong climbs earlier in the movie, and he's almost as tall as it. There's some silly stuff going on with the scaling, but God, what an incredible shot. I wish we could have gotten a long shot like that in the movie of the two charging at each other. There is some previs of the Godzilla and Kong aircraft carrier sequence. Now, this shows something that Adam Woodgard talks about in the commentary, which is that the aircraft carrier sequence was supposed to take place during a storm at night, just carrying over that like 2014 King of the Monsters nighttime aesthetic, but I'm glad they went with the daytime stuff. We also see some previs of Kong jumping around Hong Kong. So there's some more footage of that in the actual BTS on the Blu-ray, so you can check that out if you want. There's some BTS pictures of the Ghidorah prop skull being made, and I just think it's super cool. It actually looks way bigger in these behind-the-scenes photos than it does in the actual movie. It's just incredible. I didn't realize how much of an undertaking that thing was. Like I said, I never really thought about it. It looked like a practical prop to me. I guess I've always known it was practical, but I didn't realize how big it was and how impressive it is that they made that thing until I got to see this work. Looks like tons and tons of people worked on it, so great job to the crew who made this thing. It's just weird that it looks so incredibly massive in the behind the scenes here, and yet in the movie, it seems much smaller than that. I don't know why, but I've always got the impression that it's a little too small in the movie. But wow, it's such an incredible BTS stuff. Speaking of BTS stuff, we have uh, pictures of the Skull Island Boneyard, which I do believe they did, in fact, actually shoot at for Godzilla vs. Kong. I remember that. I remember covering that when they did it way back in the day, in like 2017, 2018, or something like that. Maybe it was 2019. Uh, it might have been 2019. But either way, I remember them shooting at the Boneyard, and yet it never appears in the movie, because they restructured the whole Skull Island sequence, so I'm sure that's why. But here's some BTS of it. It's really sad that we didn't get to go back to it, given that it's such an iconic location from Kong Skull Island, and it is mostly practical. Like, this stuff is here in Hawaii, and you can go visit it. Super cool. More BTS photos reveal some additional deleted scenes, so in addition to revisiting the Boneyard, we also have more BTS photos. Oh god, there's so many of this incident. Of the crash site. Now, I have pieced together a little bit, and I'll probably cover it in future videos a little more, that basically what this sequence was, was Nathan investigating the crash site of his brother, or at the time they filmed it, I believe it was actually his girlfriend or his wife's crashed helicopter that she tried to take into the Hollow Earth, it blew up, crashed. He was investigating it, looking for signs of her. I believe he gets into an altercation just because of how emotional he is over this incident. But this was all cut and removed from the movie. They changed the reason they go into Hollow Earth. It seems like maybe the reason they originally went in was a little bit more to do with finding this crash site. Whereas in the actual movie, it's a lot more to do with the energy source. Another thing that's different is that it was Nathan's brother and it's just made clear from the very start that there's no hope of him being alive. They, they don't even really bring it up. Although there is some nice, quiet little moments of reflection in the movie. We never really really get any long lingering on the trauma from this incident. But here's some more BTS photos of that being filmed, as well as a photo of Alexander Skarsgård and Isa Gonzalez standing in their Monarch uniforms, their Hollow Earth uniforms in front of a big green screen out here. So I don't know what they'd be standing in front of. I don't know why they do the green screen behind them. Maybe it was to add the Hollow Earth backdrop of the upside down sky. That could definitely be it. But it looks like they brought that out on location to the crash site itself. One of the more interesting pictures reveals Kong's temple, Kong's Hollow Earth temple, where they shot. This picture features a giant Kong statue that's not the one from the movie. It looks like this is a smaller room down one of the doorways. So we see a lot of doorways in that temple, but we never go inside any of them. This looks like it might be a room inside one of them where it looks like we probably had a sequence of, I would assume, Eileen, Gia, and Nathan going in and looking around. But yeah, I like seeing the practical Kong statue. Super cool. I love all the stuff growing off of it. I love how aged it looks. Super awesome. And I love the lighting here. The thing that a lot of the fans really freaked out about and have really taken away from this image is the background cave paint. Paintings. The background cave paintings are seen better in this image here, where we actually see Gia's doll has been placed on the 
Athena's pedestal, maybe some sort of ancient ritual that she was completing here. But if you look in the background, something really weird's going on here. It is a picture depicting the Kongs at war fighting alongside Godzilla, a Godzilla, against some creature in the sky. Now this thing looks a little bit like the Shinomura to me, but I don't think it is because it's breathing fire. A lot of fans have called this thing Space Godzilla just because clickbait sells and that's a good way to clickbait it. No chance are they going to bring in the rights to Space Godzilla. Super unrealistic for the MonsterVerse, even though they've had Ghidorah and Alien. Just forget it, guys. This is a new thing, clearly. It's just something we've never seen before. It could be like a Ghidorah type thing. I don't know. It's only got one head, so I don't think it's Ghidorah. But either way, it shows the Kongs with the axes fighting with humanity, also a cool detail, and then Godzilla on the other side fighting this creature in the sky. I personally believe that this is going to be what the plot of the next movie is about. I think we're going to find out about the Titan War between the Godzillas and the Kongs. I think we're going to see all of the ancient past in flashbacks. I think this creature in the sky is going to be something that either caused the wars or caused it to get to a point where it had to go to the surface. Maybe this was the thing that made the underground monsters extinct, the underground Godzillas and Kongs. This could be the thing that killed the ones in the Hollow Earth, whereas the rest of them moved up to the surface where they finished the war. Kongs moved to Skull Island, as we learned in Godzilla Dominion, and they seek refuge there where Godzilla took the rest of the Earth and is now patrolling, and some of his species were up there as well before getting killed by the Mutos. I personally believe that this blue flying creature that Godzilla is shooting with his breath and Kongs are attacking with the axes, I believe that's going to be potentially the antagonist of the next Kong movie, the one that brings Godzilla and Kong back together to team up against a common foe. If you don't know, that's what the plot synopsis for the next movie is. Godzilla and Kong are going to team up against some common enemy. I believe this might be that common enemy. Maybe not, but that's just a guess. I don't know. Godzilla vs. Kong was slated to release in Japan on July 2nd, so it finally was coming out in Japan. They held a premiere for it and everything, so it's finally here. Congratulations, Japan. I hope you enjoyed the movie. The premiere is a super fun event. Now, due to COVID, a lot of the American stars, all of the American stars could not come out, but they bring out a big Godzilla and Kong display. Super awesome. They have a Godzilla statue. That's the 2019 King of the Monsters statue here in the middle, and then the giant text on top. It's awesome. I saw a lot of people questioning why they don't have a Kong statue, simply because I don't think they ever made one. This Godzilla is a leftover reused thing from Godzilla King of the Monsters. That's why it's here. But they brought out a whole bunch of Japanese, um, I'm, I'm assuming they're famous celebrities, but they also have Shun Ogori, who played Ren Serizawa here in the middle, to basically headline the movie for his country. So good for him. That's a really exciting opportunity, and I hope he had a great time, and I hope everybody loved it. Wow, guys, this video was much longer than I wanted it to be. <laughs> I want to give a huge thank you to all my patrons on Patreon. They are honestly keeping the channel running, so please uh, consider supporting the Patreon, and big thank you to them. Through the Patreon, you can get access to content early, access to the Discord community, and more, so please consider checking that out. As for this one, guys, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time for the next one. D-Man, out.